If you're learning Portuguese, you may have noticed that there are two different variations of the language spoken in Brazil and in Portugal. You may also have noticed that one is significantly easier to speak and understand. Which is it? Why is that? And which one should you learn? That's what today's video is going to cover. If you're new to the channel, seja bem-vindo. My name is Liz and this channel is all about helping people build their confidence and conversation skills in Portuguese the way it's spoken here in Portugal. But a lot of the time people have only had exposure to Brazilian Portuguese. If you've been using Duolingo or Google Translate, then this is actually what you've been learning. So I hate to break it to you, but European Portuguese is quite a little bit more difficult to learn but it is what you should be focusing on if you are planning on spending time here in Portugal. So why is Brazilian Portuguese easier? Well, I've been studying Portuguese for over 15 years and I've lived in both countries. I love both equally, but this information can be very helpful for those who are just starting their journey. So let's get into it. Let's start with pronunciation. Now, just like Spanish, there are some real subtle but important differences in the way that we will pronounce words differently when speaking uh, in Brazilian Portuguese. So I did make this video here with my friends Leo and Carol, where we went into a lot of detail about this, so you can check that out next. But here are some of the headlines. Brazilians will use more open vowels and the Portuguese use more closed vowels, which mean we're closing our mouth more, the sounds are staying more in our throat so therefore it can be more difficult to hear. So listen to the difference between these two sentences. Oi Linda, tudo bem? Olá Linda, estás bem? You can hopefully hear that the Brazilian sentence there was projected more outwards which makes it easier for beginners especially to understand what's being said whereas the Portuguese was more closed, it was more in the mouth and throat. The sound of a lot of letters will also change. Now, it's important to note that there are a variety of accents across Brazil and Portugal, but here are some of the common differences you will hear. Dia in Portugal will become dia in Brazil. Feliz in Portugal will become feliz in Brazil. Porta in Portugal will become porta or porta in Brazil. The list goes on and it's a lot of fun to explore, so do check that video out next to learn even more. Then there's rhythm. Do you remember this video where I taught you about the difference between a syllable timed language that stresses every syllable like Spanish and Italian? Well, Portuguese isn't a syllable timed language, it's a stress timed language, meaning that we're not gonna accent all of the syllables, just a few. But like many things, these two opposites exist on like a spectrum. So even though Portuguese is a stress timed language, Brazilians will have a tendency to pronounce more of the syllables, once again, making it easier to hear what people are saying. So the word verdade in Portugal will become verdade in Brazil. The word exatamente in Portugal will become exatamente in Brazil. If more syllables are stressed, it is so much easier to catch what is being said. Is this making sense? Give me a yes in the comments if you're finally starting to understand why you are making life a little bit more difficult for yourself if you're learning European Portuguese. Finally, we have grammar. Now, if you are learning Brazilian Portuguese, this is where you can breathe a sigh of relief because verb conjugations using day-to-day -day language is gonna be much simpler. In Portugal, we will usually use five conjugations of a verb. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take the verb to go. To conjugate it five times, we have I go, eu vou. We call this the first person singular. Then we have you go, tu vais, the second person singular. Then he, she, you, polite, go. Ele, ela, você, vai, the third person singular. We go, nós vamos, the first person plural. And then finally, they or you guys go, eles, elas, vocês, vão the third person plural. There's actually six conjugations. We have vos as well, but it's mostly fallen out of use. Not everybody uses it, so just do yourself a favor and you don't need to learn that one. 
But in Brazil, you aren't going to use the tu form. Yes, it's true in some regions they do use it, but mostly you're going to hear você for you in Brazil, regardless of who you are talking to. On the other hand, in Portugal, você can sometimes come across as rude, so you may want to avoid this. I do have a whole video on how to be polite over here. Brazilians will also actually swap out the nós form as well. Instead of saying nós vamos, they may well say a gente vai. Once again, using the third person singular. So there's another conjugation that you don't even have to learn if you're speaking colloquially in day-to-day -day language. So really to get by, we only need three conjugations. Amazing. There are a lot more grammatical differences and you can check out this video if you are interested. You can also check out this video where I talk about my journey with Portuguese living in both Brazil and Portugal, where I actually switch between the two variants speaking Portuguese, so it's quite fun. As I say, I love them both. I find the differences endlessly fascinating, but hopefully this has shown you that if you are moving to Portugal, it is important to find a teacher that is going to help you to speak and understand European Portuguese. And that's what I do day in, day out. I have an awesome program that's for beginners online. So if you want to find out more about that, I would love to see you in my free taster lesson. The link to register is in the description. I'll be back next week with more tips and tutorials to improve your Portuguese, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a thing. Ciao for now!